Okay. So let me make a few changes. Okay. Okay. So before we begin, I mean, we spoke about, let me do a quick recap, you know, what we talked about yesterday. So we spoke about that, why would you need virtualization? We, we looked at the importance that, you know, how virtualization is going to help you. Okay. Then we spoke about what a hypervisor is and what hypervisor is doing for you. We spoke about what a type one and a type two hypervisor is. We looked at their architectures and how it basically looks like. Okay. Then we basically spoke about a couple of terminologies which are used in VMware, which is basically sharing. And we spoke about overcommitment. Okay. So these were the things that we covered yesterday. So any questions anyone has, whatever we spoke about yesterday, let me know. Okay. So today I would like to talk about from the you know versioning point of view that you know how ESXi as a product has evolved. Okay. And then I would like to talk about that what are we going to do in our lab? How are we going to build our lab? And you know, we will also be providing you access. So in case if you don't have access on your machine or if you do not have a physical machine on your environment to do the practicals. No problem. Uh, we will provide you with the machine. You can remotely connect to it and you can do all the practicals. And then in the end, I would show you how the installation needs to happen for an ESXi. Okay, what are the prerequisites? What are the things that we have to keep in mind when we are installing the ESXi? So let me talk about from the versioning point of view. Okay. So when you know the five members of VMware who came together and founded the company in 1998. They wanted to build an hypervisor and they were looking for an operating system on top of that, you know, they could add the functionality. So what they did was they basically reached out to Red Hat and they asked Red Hat that would you be, you know, willing to share your operating system and we want to customize it and sell it in the market. So Red Hat said, okay, you can do it, but you know, you would have to pay me a money. You know, you would have to pay me some royalty. So VMware agreed to it. Okay. So what they did was they basically took a Red Hat application, the entire operating system, and they merged hypervisor capabilities in it. Okay. And this was called ESX. What is the full form of ESX? Elastic Sky X. Why did they name it in such a way? I'm not sure about it. Okay. But when you talk about ESX, it was basically Red Hat in which hypervisor capabilities were integrated and it was called ESX. Okay. Now with ESX, there were a lot of challenges. Challenges in the sense, they were dependent on Red Hat. So any patch that Red Hat released, ESX also had to patch it. Okay. The booting time was very high. If you powered on ESX, you would see that, you know, for five or six minutes, it kept on booting. The booting time was very high. Yeah, you had a lot of unwanted services which were running in the background, which were unnecessarily exposed, you know, on the hypervisor, making it vulnerable. Okay, so these were a couple of challenges that you had with ESX. And the most important challenge that I would want to highlight over here is that VMware did not have the control of the software. And of course, there was a royalty involved, you know, that they had to pay. Okay. So VMware had to come up with something. What did they do? They basically downloaded Linux. So if you want a free operating system, you can simply download the Linux, right? So what they did, they downloaded Linux and they installed or they merged hypervisor capabilities over here. Yeah. And now this was called ESXi. I means integrated, embedded. Okay. So this is now called ESXi. So with ESXi, VMware made a huge change in the sense they said, you know, bye-bye Red Hat. They don't need Red Hat now because they are not dependent on it. Now they're not dependent on Red Hat. They had the control of the patch. All the patches they wanted to roll out, you know, whichever way they wanted to roll out, they could do it. 
booting time drastically came down if a, if you power on an esx now you would see that you know the operating the operating system itself will take then you know will take less than 2 or 3 minutes to boot up completely or even faster okay you have very limited services which get enabled on the uh, esxi and of course vmware is not paying any royalty to anyone okay they have basically made the software in house yeah so these were the benefits that vmware basically had with esxi yeah so now let me talk about from the versioning point of view so when esx was launched you know they had the version 1.0 then they had 2.0 they had 3.0 3.5, 4.0, and 4.1. After 4.1, ESX was end of life. It was history. There were no more ESX versions coming out. Okay. For ESXi, they started off with 4.0, 4.1, 5.0, 5.1, 5.5, 6.0, 6.5, 6.7, 7.0, and 8.0. these are the versions that you have in esxi okay so this is how basically the versioning is i started off working i started off working on esxi 3.5 this was the first version in 2010 that i started working off so i basically seen all the versions you know as as they have rolled out and you know the gotchas you know that they have had okay okay so we understand what the history has been of esxi we understand how the versioning is now let me talk about how do we install it and what are we doing in our lab to get this going okay so in my lab what i have is i've got one machine okay i've got a one server with me only one machine i've got and here on this machine i might have a windows 20 uh, windows 10 or i might have a windows 2019 operating system okay on this operating system i am installing a type 2 hypervisor okay i am basically installing a vmware workstation over here on top of windows 2019 and then i am creating a lot of virtual machines to create my lab this is basically what i am going to do okay i do not have a physical boxes you know for every machine that i can replicate a physical environment so i am basically utilizing a vmware workstation for the same if you take an official vmware course wherein you are paying hundreds and thousands of rupees or dollars you know depending on not hundreds of thousands of dollars but yeah i mean you would be paying at least about 2 or 3000 dollars you know uh, for the training if you are in india you would have to pay at least 1000 dollars you know to to get that training in that official training of vmware they also give you virtual esx size they give you these esx size which are running as a software they don't give you hardware as an esx size to practice on keep that in mind okay i have attended a lot of vmware trainings and they always give you a virtual esx size okay we are also doing the same thing over here we are also providing you virtual esx size that we will be creating in vmware workstation and then we will be setting up a lab let me show it to you on how the installation would happen of a type 2 hypervisor and then i'll talk about that how do you install an esxi okay so to install vmware workstation i already have the setup with me okay now vmware workstation for personal use it, it is available for free you do not have to you know uh, pay anything for this so all that you need to do is go to google and just type over here uh, vmware okay so just type over here vmware workstation free for personal use okay and you would see that you know you have a dedicated vmware article where it basically tells you that now you can download vmware personal uh, you know workstation or if you have a mac you can use view fusion and this is all for free so you would have to after the installation just choose the option i'm using it for personal use and you know you would be able to download it this is the location where you need to go uh, simply register yourself on the broadcom website and then you would be able to access it okay yeah that is correct they removed the free version of the uh, of the esxi that's not there but i think you still have the uh, 
90 um, 60 day period over there so you can download the software if you don't have it i can share it with you the isos and then you can basically you know use those for like uh, 60 days and after that you know you can go for the uh, reinstallation again so that shouldn't be a concern now what i'll do is i'll go ahead with the installation of the vmware workstation so all that you have to do is basically make a right click on the vmware workstation setup okay and then uh, simply go ahead keep hitting next and install the operating and, in, and install the application nothing fancy nothing major that you have to do over here straight simple installation now you need to make sure that the machine that you're installing on has a good amount of ram so if i show you over here in my machine has got about 100 gb of ram and it has got at least about 16 uh, virtual logical processors so if you do not have a machine at your place uh, in your office or at your home on which you can do the practicals do not worry about it we will share you the lab okay what is the difference between the efx and efx sorry i did not understand what is efx it is efx and esxi is that the one that you were referring to Yeah, so like I mentioned, you know, a few minutes back, um, I think you might be, uh, you know, um, I think I'm not sure that if you were there on the class, but I spoke about it. So I was talking about that, you know, with ESX, they had Red Hat that they had basically, uh, you know, merged with. So they had to pay a lot of royalty to Red Hat. They were dependent on Red Hat for patching, upgrading and all that. So what VMware did was they basically downloaded Linux, they installed hypervisor capabilities, and they started calling it as ESXi. So that is what the difference is. So ESX was basically uh, built on a Red Hat image, and now ESXi was basically built on the Linux kernel, the free Linux kernel, which is available for everyone. That's the major difference over there. So with the ESXi, with the introduction of ESXi, VMware had a lot of control on it. And they were not paying royalty to uh, Red Hat. That was one of the biggest, you know, benefits that they had. Okay. Sir, uh, which uh, version uh, VMware and Red Hat collaborated with? Uh, which version both are collaborated? So till four dot one. So one dot zero, two dot zero, three dot zero, three dot five, four dot zero, and four dot one. These four versions, you know, they had ESX. After 4.1, ESX was not there. It was history. They stopped, you know, developing ESX after 4.1. ESX, okay. Okay, so once the installation is done, now I do not have the free version, the personal version over here. So that is why it is asking me that you have to basically, um, you know, enter the license key. So I'm going to quickly, sh um, you know, stop the, uh, I'm going to pause my screen. And I would enter the key. So just give me a minute while I quickly enter the key over here. And then I will resume my screen share. Okay. This is done. Now it basically says after entering the key that you need to reboot your machine once because the installation has happened. I'll say, okay, fair enough. And I'll go ahead and reboot it. Okay. Let me wait for a minute. Let, uh, let me wait for my machine to come back. Um, Okay, I've got a couple of questions over here. Could you share us a software? Sure, I'll definitely do it in the background. Uh, so after this class, uh, you know, we'll share the applications with you, the software, that's not a concern. Okay, uh, put the installer in the chat box. I mean, that's a big installer. Um, it's about 600 MB. I'm not sure if the uh, chat box will be able to, you know, basically pass on that application to you. But you can use the virtu virtual box as well. You are right. So. Uh, VMware Workstation is one of the type 2 hypervisors. If you are comfortable with VirtualBox, that is given by Oracle. You can also use that. There's no concerns over there. I am comfortable with VMware Workstation. That's the reason I'm showing you this option. If you are comfortable with VirtualBox, absolutely go for it. Okay. So once the installation is done, now I have got VMware Workstation, which is running on my machine. Okay. Now the question is, what next? Okay. Now, let me tell you what am I going to do build, to build my lab, okay? Let me share my screen again. <clears throat> okay, 
So to build my lab, what I need to do is I need to basically create four machines over here, or basically five machines I would be creating. So I would be creating first a VM. This machine will have Active Directory. This will have DNS and this will have DHCP. These three roles I will be installing on my Windows machine. Now, if you are comfortable on Linux, and on Linux, if you want to set up DNS and DHCP and directory service, you can absolutely do it. Yeah. Now, ESXi requires external storage. So when you have ESXi's in your environment, you would also have big boxes of storage you know, that you will have. And when you carve out a portion of a storage, you present that portion on the ESXi. Okay. So I need to emulate this environment in my lab. Okay. How would I do this? So there is an application which is available on the internet and that is called OpenFiler. Okay. I would use OpenFiler to emulate my storage. It would work for me as if I have a storage box via which I am presenting the storage to my ESX boxes. This will be my second machine. And then I would be creating three ESX size. This is what I'm going to do. Okay. So to recap, I would have the first machine as my Windows AD controller, the second machine for my software, which is my storage, and third, fourth, and fifth will be all my ESXIs you know, that I will be creating in my VMware Workstation environment. Now, keep in mind, I am using VMware Workstation only to build my lab. My intention is not to teach you VMware Workstation. Okay, I am here to teach you what VMware is. However, to build my lab, I have to use VMware Workstation and I, in order to build my lab. That's the only reason I'm using VMware Workstation over here. Okay. But we would be focusing on VM, on ESXi, the enterprise version. Now, we know what an ESXi is. Okay. So ESXi is basically a type one hypervisor. It is a complete operating system. Okay. And I installed this directly on the hard drive. This is what my ESXi is. ESXi is a software that basically gives me the capability to deploy multiple virtual machines on one physical box. Now, the question is, if you have one ESXi in your environment, or maybe two or three ESXi's in your environment, it is easy to manage. You can open tabs, you can open three tabs, and you can manage your ESXi, no concerns. But think about it. If you have 1,000 ESXi boxes in your environment, Okay, you have got a lot of virtual machines. Let's say you know you have got uh, close to about thirty thousand virtual machines. Okay, you have got one thousand boxes on every ESXi. You are running thirty virtual machines, so you have basically thirty thousand virtual machines. How would you manage these? You know, one thousand physical boxes. How would you manage thirty thousand virtual machines? You need a you need a software, you know, which can basically do all this. In comes a vCenter. So vCenter is a management software which is given by VMware and it is basically a central management console. So from one location, from one browser, from one tab, you can manage all your VMware environment. Okay. So this is what the capability is. So here you would have the capability to manage thousands of ESXIs and hundreds and thousands of virtual machines you, know, you can manage. So this is what a vCenter is. So if, so if someone asks you what a vCenter is, always tell them this is a management plane. Okay, from here I manage my ESXIs, vCenter, storage, networking, cluster, HA, migrations. I manage anything and everything from here. This is what a vCenter for me is. vCenter is a complete software. Okay, it is an application that you deploy. Okay, we will be talking more about it in the uh, training. Okay, I have a question from uh, Flavio, and he says that the new versions of ESXi only have virtual appliances, or do they still have the versions to install on top of an operating system? You are right. So when I talk about an ESXi, so ESXi, you will get an ISO, okay? And that ISO, you basically install on the hardware directly. Yeah. When you talk about vCenter, vCenter, you again get an ISO. So you have to basically import the ISO in your environment 
and it will automatically create a virtual machine for you. You do not have to create a virtual machine and then install the vCenter. The vCenter installation is very simple. You get an ISO, you run that ISO, and it will automatically create a virtual machine, install the application, set up everything on its own. You do not have to worry about it. Okay. So this is what ESXi is. This is what a vCenter is. Any questions on these two terms? What an ESXi is and what a vCenter is? Anyone, if you haven't understood, let me know. Okay, moving on. Now let me talk about a term which is called a vSphere. Now what is vSphere? Let me answer this question, okay? So let's take an example. Um, you have to use Word on your machine or you want PowerPoint or you want Excel, okay? You have to use Outlook. You have to use OneNote, okay? And you know, a few other applications. If you want to use all these applications on your machine, what will you do? You will buy MS Office. What is MS Office? MS Office is a bundle, okay? It is a group of applications, okay? And when you install MS Office, you are basically installing to get these applications. There is no application called MS Office that you will be using. After the installation of the MS Office bundle, you will get Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, OneNote. This is what you will get. Similarly is the case with vSphere. Now, where I have written MS Office, replace it with vSphere. Okay. vSphere is also a bundle. Just like MS Office is a bundle that you get, vSphere is also a bundle. In vSphere, you get a lot of products. You get ESXi, you get uh, vCenter, you get Replication Appliance, you get Bitfusion, you get VMware tools. So all these different applications basically make up a bundle of a vSphere, okay? So when someone talks about what a vSphere is, so vSphere is a bundle, okay? In that bundle, you have a lot of software like ESXi, vCenter, Replication, Appliance, Fusion, VMware tools, uh, you know, a few more here and there. So all these applications basically make up a bundle that's called vSphere. What is ESXi? ESXi is my hypervisor, which gives me the capability on one hardware. I can deploy virtual machines. What is a vCenter? vCenter is a software that I can install. And from this software, I can manage hundreds and thousands of ESXIs and hundreds and thousands of uh, virtual machines, okay? All right, now let me talk about the real thing now, which is installing the um, ESXi. So if you have to install the ESXi, what are the prerequisites? So what are the things that you have to keep in mind? Let me answer that question now, okay? Now, if you have a laptop at home, or if you have a desktop at home, okay? If you have a very old server at home, I mean, be it any machine that you have, okay? If you mount the ESXi ISO, okay? And you proceed with the installation, there are very high chances that, you know, ESXi will get installed on your hardware, okay? So for example, if you have to install Windows 10 on a laptop, or Windows 11 on a laptop. I mean, you basically mount the ISO and you proceed with the installation, okay? There are very high chances that a Windows 10 installation will go through. I mean, I have a laptop that I bought in 2008. I mean, that's a very old machine. I mean, it's truly antique now. I mean, it's close to about 16, 17 years old. And on that machine, I'm still running Windows 10. It works perfectly fine, okay? So Windows 10 as an operating system can get installed very quickly or very easily. Similarly is the case with ESXi. If you mount an ESXi on your server, on your desktop, on your laptop, and if you try installing ESXi, chances are very high that the installation will go through, okay? However, there is a catch. With VMware, whenever you install ESXi, you have to make sure that you install it on a compatible hardware, okay? If you do not install ESXi, on a compatible hardware, tomorrow, if you have a problem with your ESXi and you call up technical support engineer and you tell them that, you know, I need your help 
in troubleshooting the issue. Technical support engineer will ask you the first thing, give me ESXi log bundle. This is what they will tell you. Okay. When you give ESXi log bundle, it has basically all the details in it. Any and every detail about your ESXi, right from the installation, this log bundle will have. Okay. When you upload this log bundle on the VMware FTP portal, in the background for technical support engineer, this zip file automatically gets extracted. Okay. Um, I know for a fact that's the reason I'm telling you. Okay. This zip file will automatically get extracted, and the technical support engineer has an internal tool. Okay. That internal tool is basically all UI, and it will tell the technical support engineer in less than two minutes where the problems are. Okay, all the problems will basically come up in, you know, in red color. So this is like a UI page. You would have, you know, a green over there indicating everything is okay. You would have yellow over there indicating, you know, there is some warning. And wherever they would see red, that means, you know, that is a problem. That thing is not working or that is not supported or there is a, some, ch some challenge over there. So technical support engineer will look at the UI page, the red column, and it will see and it will clearly say over there, hardware not compatible or issues with the hardware okay as soon as technical support engineer gets to know that you are running esxi on a non supported hardware they will close your sr they will close your case stating that you are running esxi on a non supported hardware and we cannot support you one liner email and your case is closed then after that no matter how hard you try or how many escalations you try, nothing would happen. If you are running ESXi on a non-supported hardware, trust me, nobody is going to help you. Okay? So the first thing that you have to always make sure when you're installing ESXi is that you have a compatible hardware. Okay? Now, how do you verify if the hardware that you have is compatible or not? What do I do to make sure? Okay? Now, let me answer this question. To make sure that if your hardware is compatible or not, all that you have to do is open up Google. Okay. And on Google, you need to type VMware compatibility guide. This is what you need to type and hit the enter key. You will get the first URL and open this URL. When you will open this URL, here VMware talks about all the compatibility. Okay. Now, there are too many things over here, you know, in terms of all their softwares that they have. So you can check compatibility for networking, for architectural designs, for storage, end user graphics, IoT, end user computing, management, and blah, 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 blah. What are we concerned with? We are concerned with systems and servers, the option which is selected by default. This is the one. Okay. Now, what is your intention? Your intention is that you want to install ESXi 8.0, the latest version you want to install on your hardware, okay? The hardware that you have, it is from which manufacturer? The hardware that I have, it's from Fujitsu. For example, it could be Dell, IBM, Lenovo, Cisco, anything. I am taking an example of Fujitsu over here, and then I will hit update and view results, okay? You change the display over here to 500, okay? And these are all the Fujitsu servers, which are basically compliant to run ESXi 8.0. Now you need to do a control F and find if your server, if your Fujitsu server, the model number is mentioned over here or not. If your model number is not mentioned over here, that means your hardware is not supported. If your hardware version is mentioned over here, that means your hardware is compliant with version 8.0. There is no you know, room for error over here. Do not assume that you know, Fujitsu might have done a mistake or they might have accidentally you know, missed my hardware model or there could be a human error over here. Okay? Okay. So do not assume all these things. Okay? Uh, if your hardware is not here, then make sure and then you know, uh, just understand that your hardware is not compatible. Okay. If your hardware is mentioned over here, that means it is compatible. If it's not mentioned over here, it is not compatible. There are no two things about it. Okay, let me be very honest with you over here. 
So this is the way you verify that whether your hardware is compatible or if it's not compatible. Okay. Similarly, you need to do uh, for the other components as well. So for example, if you're installing a graphics card, so you need to verify over here, is your graphics card supported? Is your networking, uh, is your network card that you're trying to install on your hardware, is it supported or not? So this is something that you need to verify. So for example, if you're trying to install a network card and it is from Intel, for example, okay, then you need to verify that is your hardware uh, compatible or not? So for example, you will come over here and you will do an update and it will show you all the network cards that you have over here, which are compatible with Intel, you know, from Intel, you know, the compatible network cards. So you need to look it up. So when you're installing any component, it is your responsibility as a VMware admin to validate whether your product, whether the hardware is compatible or not. And this is the way we look it up. Doubts, confusions, questions. Okay, now once I've verified my hardware is compatible, what's next? The next thing that you have to do after verifying that your hardware is compatible is from where would you get the ISO? To install the ESXi, you need the ISO, right? So from where are you going to get it? Always remember, you will get your ISO from your vendor. If you have the hardware from HP, if you have the hardware from Dell, IBM, Fujitsu, Lenovo, whichever your vendor is, you will call them up and you will get the ESXi ISO from them. Do not download the ESXi software from the Broadcom portal. Please do not do that. Okay. Why? Because when you're installing an operating system, you are only not concerned. You are you're not concerned only with the operating system installation. So this is your HP hardware. Okay. This is your HP box. Now on this HP box, you need to install ESXi. So the first thing that you will look into is upgrading the drivers and the firmwares. Okay. This hardware, this HP box will have drivers and firmwares. So you first need to upgrade the drivers and the firmwares. And after that, you install the ESXi. This is what you need to do. Okay. So what hardware manufacturers do is they basically build a custom ISO. Okay. They build a custom ISO, which has the drivers, which has the firmwares and which has the ESXi all in one. Okay. You need to get their ISO, follow their documentation on how to upgrade the drivers and the firmwares. Once that is done, then you proceed with the ESXi installation. This is something that you have to keep in mind. Okay. Now, how do we install an ESXi? Let me get to this now. So keep in mind, quick recap. Hardware compatibility, your responsibility as a VMware admin to verify. Then you need to get the ISO from the vendor. These two things, you have to be absolutely clear about it. Now, how do you install the ESXi? Let's say that I've installed the drivers, I've installed the firmwares, my hardware is all up to date. Now I need to install the ESXi. How would I do this? Now here I've installed a VMware workstation. Okay, here I'm going to install the uh, ESXi. But if you install ESXi on a Type 2 hypervisor, or if you install it on a physical machine, it's basically one and the same thing. There is no difference over there. Keep in mind that whenever you are installing any operating system on a Type 2 hypervisor, Type 2 hypervisor does not inject any kind of file in your ISO, okay? We are not, uh, you know, manipulating your ISO or we are not making any changes over there. Be absolutely sure about it. For personal laptop purchase, how can I get from vendor, okay? Uh, so I would recommend you do not buy a laptop. If you have to do a practice for your lab, buy a desktop. Desktop will be more cost effective. You will get good configuration and you can get a made, uh, you know, desktop. You do not have to buy a branded one. So I got a, you know, made machine, a custom assembled machine for my home and I practice on that. So I would prefer that and I would suggest you that. Now to create a new virtual machine, all that I need to do or before that, I need to create an internal network. So what would happen is when I am creating my lab, okay, like I mentioned earlier, I have to create multiple machines. Okay. I have to create an AD server. I have to create a storage server, and then I have to create my ESXIs. 
now it is important that these machines should talk to one another okay how will they be talking to one another so in vmware workstation you have something called as a private network okay there is something called as a private network and i would plug all these machines on my private network over here all of them will be connected to my private network and then they will be able to talk to one another okay this is what i need to do how do i create a private network let me quickly show you that so all that you have to do is basically go to virtual network editor you click on the add network over here click on the drop down menu now these are all the private networks that vmware workstation is basically providing you okay you can use any one over here so for example i am choosing vm19 okay this is a private network given by vmware workstation it has no outside connectivity okay it's only within the vmware workstation you will be able to communicate uncheck both these options over here i do not want vmware workstation to release out the ip addresses i'll hit the apply button i'll let the network get added over here and i'll hit the okay button okay so i have added my network now i need to create a new virtual machine okay now what is a virtual machine virtual machine is basically a logical representation of a physical server okay it's a logical representation so let's take an example you buy an hp server and on that hp server you were in, you install windows operating system and then you were running iis as an application okay if i have to virtualize it so what will i do instead of a physical machine i will create a virtual machine i will install windows and then i would be running iis so what is a virtual machine virtual machine is a logical representation of your physical machine okay always keep that in mind this is the first thing the second thing virtual machine as the name says it is a virtual machine it is not a physical machine okay so a virtual machine is basically made up of group of files there are a lot of files that make up a virtual machine okay so two things you have to keep in mind the first thing virtual machine is a logical representation okay and the second thing virtual machine is made up of a lot of files that is a group of files collectively that create a virtual machine always remember these two points over here okay now let's create the virtual machine so to create the virtual machine i am basically creating it in vmware workstation why because i have to set up my lab that's the reason okay so the actual installation you will do exactly on the physical machine as well there would be no difference over here uh but you know i am creating the virtual machine this is on a vmware workstation so i just have to you know breeze through a few options over here so i'll choose custom i'll keep hitting next i will say install the operating system later i would say that i am installing esxi i am installing esxi 7 that's okay though i am installing version 8 now it is saying that the virtual machine that you are about to create like i mentioned um every virtual machine is a group of files where are you going to save those files so what i will do is i will go to my c drive i'll create a folder over here okay and i'll call it lab and in lab i'll create another folder over here and i'll call it esxi01 okay i'll call it esxi01 so this is the folder where i'm going to place all my files because virtual machine is a group of files now it is saying that how many vcpus you want to give to the virtual machine i would say 8 how much ram you want to give to the virtual machine i would say 30 gb 30 gb ram i want to give to my esxi all these defaults i would keep how big you want the hard drive on the esxi 10 gb is more than enough in production i would recommend at least a 64 gb ssd but this is my lab so i can proceed with a 10 gb okay and what have i done i have created a virtual machine on vmware workstation now i'm going to change the networking over here you see the networking over here it is pointing to nat so vmware workstation gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to network however 
I will be choosing my VM19, the custom private network that I created. I will be using that one to put my machine on. Okay. Now I need to map my ISO. So what will I do? I will click on CD DVD drive and I would map my ISO. I already have the ESXi ISO that I have downloaded. And here is my ESXi ISO. Okay. This is my ESXi VIM ISO. I would hit the OK button. I'll hit the OK button. Now I have mapped my ESXi on my virtual machine. I'll click on the button power on the virtual machine. And now I begin with my ESXi installation. Okay, fail to start the virtual machine. Why is that? Okay, I understand the reason now because I did not enable virtualization in this. Yeah, that's the reason. Okay, give me one minute. Okay, let me make a change on my physical machine. I know what the problem is. Just give me a minute. So basically, when you install a virtual ESXi, you have to basically expose the virtualized functions on the virtual machine, you know, for the installation to go through. So I have to basically expose those functions. Okay, I'll hit the OK button. I've exposed those functions now from my hardware. I have power on the machine. My Windows 2019 is kind of booting up. So yeah, I basically have not shared my screen because um, I'm not sharing right now the option. I'll, sh I'll share it to you. You know, the one that I have to, that I've made the changes on. Now, let me quickly connect to my test server again. Okay, my machine any minute, it should be booting up. Give me a minute, please. Hello, Vikas, your screen is not visible. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to share my screen, but you know, my machine is not responding. Just give me a minute. Okay, so I had to make a change on my machine um, so that, you know, I can install the virtual machine over here. So now when I go to my VMware workstation, when I go to the ESXi, the VM that I've created over here, and now when I power it on, okay, why does it say so? It should have gone through. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so now my machine gets powered on. So here, what I'm doing now is I am booting from my ISO. So like, you know, whenever you boot from Windows, what would happen is Windows would show you, you know, loading Windows files. And, you know, you would see those lines at the bottom running across. Similarly, over here, whenever you boot from the ESXi, it will basically have a counter over here. You see this timer over here at the bottom? And then where it says five, four, three, two, one, and then basically it will begin with the installation over here. So this is what it is doing right now. Okay. So right now I am booting from my ESXi ISO and the ISO is loading up. Now, whenever an ESXi loads up, while this is loading up, let me show you a couple of more things over here. Quickly go to Google and type ESXi build number. You will get the first URL from the Broadcom portal. Go over here. And you see these options over here? All these options that you see over here, they are basically your ESXi versions. You see these build numbers? A build number basically tells you on which exact version of ESXi you are running. So with ESXi, if you look at it, they installed the general availability version, the GA version. Then they basically rolled out a couple of patches. Then they released update one. Update one is like, you know, a big update wherein they have a lot of patches and, you know, all those combined together. Then they rolled out update two. Okay. And then they rolled out, you know, um, an uh, express patch two over here as well. 
So you see over here, the build releases, it's 8.0 update 1, update 1A, 1C, 2A, 2B, 2C, you know, all these patches. And everything has a build number. So how would you differentiate or how would you come to know that which exact version are you running? You have to basically look at the build number. This is how you verify. Okay. So if I take you back to my portal over here and let this go through, once this ESX, once this, uh, you know, ISO, you know, loads up, you would see that, you know, I would have a build number on the portal. Okay. So any minute it should be coming up now. So this build number, you can basically come over here, do a quick, you know, control F, pull up that number, and that will tell you that which exact version of ESXi you are running over here. This is what you need to do, okay? Now, this is again my lab. I am running in VMware Workstation. I'm not running directly on the hardware. So yeah, you have to wait for a couple of minutes, you know, for this to go through. Uh, but that's okay. Okay, this is only in a, this is a lab. That's the reason. I mean, if it was a physical machine, I mean, this would have breezed through. I mean, this would have gone very quickly. But yeah, I am running on a physical machine within a VMware workstation, so it will be bound to be a slightly slow. But that's okay. In the lab, it is it is fine. Okay, so I'm waiting for it to boot up. Show me all those options over there. And similarly, I would be creating other virtual machines as well. So while this is loading up, okay, here it is. So you see this over here, this option? Okay, so this is the build number. Now, what is this build number? How do I verify? So if you look at the numbers over here, 205130. So I'll do over here, go to uh, the portal, do a quick search, 205130. And then you will get to know that you are running an ESXi GA version. That's the ESXi builder version that you are installing right now. This is the GA. Okay. Similarly, you can get to know when you know what your version is. The versions have been there for ages now. You have versions right from ESXi 4. So this is, I'm talking about 2010, 2011, okay? Since that time, you know, they have had these versions that, you know, they constantly keep on updating. So look at the version number <clears throat> and you will get to know exactly what you are running, okay? Now here, you see the option VMware Inc. Why do you see VMware Inc? Because you're running in VMware Workstation. If you were running, if this ISO on an HP server, it would have clearly mentioned that, you know, this is a Dell, um, you know, this is an HP DL380 generation 11, generation 10, whatever the hardware is, it would have basically clearly mentioned over here. Okay. Here it basically talks about how much, which CPU are you running, how much RAM that you have given to this ESXi, all these details will basically come up over here. Okay. And here you see all the services which are booting up. This is the bar that we are waiting for it to complete. Once this completes, then we get to the actual installation window. Like in Windows, you would have seen, you know, Windows is loading files and you know, that bar is going across. And then you get to that screen where you hit the enter key, choose the version that you have to install and, you know, do blah, 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 all the other things. So this is that same thing over here. I just need to wait for this, you know, bootloader to get finished. And then... Uh, it will give me the actual installation prompts over here on how to install the ESXi. Now, keep in mind, whenever you're installing ESXi, I do not need a mouse, okay? There is no use of a mouse when you're installing an ESXi. Keyboard is more than enough, okay? Keyboard will do the job. All that you have to do is you have to hit enter, okay? A couple of times, you have to hit F11 a couple of times, and that's about it. Nothing fancy, nothing complex, nothing out of the box that is super duper crazy, you know, that you have to do to install the ESXi. Very simple installations, very handy. Just keep hitting next, keep hitting, uh, you know, uh, enter F11, and that's about it. Once the installation is done, then I need to access my ESXi. This is what I need to do.
Now, remember, this is screen that you are seeing uh, is basically called a DCUI. What is DCUI? DCUI basically means direct console user interface. So let's take an example. You have an HP server, which is in a remote data center. Okay. Now, this server is not reachable on the network. How would you connect to this server? So every hardware manufacturer gives you something called as out of band management utility. So in HP, it's called ILO. In Dell, it's called ID rack. In, in ASUS, it's called AS rack. So everyone gives you, you know, um, an out of band an out of band management tool where you simply connect to that tool and then you basically access the screen. Okay. So that screen that you will access, this is called DCUI. Okay. So now here it says, "Welcome to the installation." Very good. We are uh, we are about to begin the installation of the ESXi. Now read the first line. It is very important. VMware ESXi 8 installs on most systems. So the very first line clearly highlights that if you want to install ESXi 8 on any Dictom Harry machine, you know, you will be able to do it because ESXi 8 installs on most systems. You will be able to install it. There would be no challenges over there. Okay. But read the second line. But only systems on VMware compatibility guide are supported. And here is the link for the VMware compatibility guide. So VMware on the very first screen is basically telling you, make sure that you have a compliant hardware. If you do not have a compliant hardware, tomorrow you run into issues, you will call up technical support engineer from VMware. They will not give you support. Keep that in mind. If you do not have compatible hardware, they will not give you support. You as a VMware admin, it is your responsibility to verify that whether the hardware is compatible or not. And the way that I showed you, look at that portal, verify that your hardware is compatible, take screenshots, take snippets, and save it with you in your you know, CMDB or wherever your location is in the organization. So tomorrow after a year, if someone comes back to you and you know they ask you that did you verify that your hardware was compatible, at least at that point of time, you would have screenshots to show them that yes, I did take screenshot. And at that point of time, the, the VMware portal did tell me that ESXi 8 is compatible with the hardware, so on, so, so on, so, so on, so Okay. So any questions on this first screen anyone has, let me know. Okay. So it is important that you do pay attention to the hardware. Okay. I'll hit the enter key and I'll proceed. Now it says license agreement, whether you like it or you don't like it, you have to agree to the license agreement. Okay. There is no workaround over here. So what do I need to do? I need to hit uh, F11 over here. Okay. So yeah, I would not be able to hit F11 because I have a Mac operating system. So it somehow does not recognize the F11 key. So I need to use the on-screen keyboard. Okay. So I would use this. I would come over here. And now, come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the problem. Okay, let me try this again. On screen keyboard, F11. Okay. okay. Why is it not taking it? Come on. I mean, it worked for me the other day. Come on. Ah. Nah. I don't know why it is not working for me. 
Okay, you know what? Let me get our Windows keyboard. Just give me one minute, okay? I don't know what is wrong over here. Okay, so just give me one minute. I am plugging in a Windows keyboard now, and then it should go through. I don't know, it worked for the last time. What is wrong with this now? Okay, let me close this. Let me come over here. Why is it still not going through? Come on. Come on. So can you uh, press the uh, function and uh, F11? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I tried that. It is not taking it. Okay. I don't know why. Yeah. Give me a minute. Let me try this again. Okay, let me open up a notepad. Yeah. It is working over here. I'm sorry for it, but you know why this is not working. This seems to be working. This is another problem that I have recently started encountering. Okay, let me try this again now. Nah, it's not taking it. I don't know why it is not accepting it. Let me try one more time on screen keyboard. No, it is not accepting for me. Okay, let me try something else. Give me a minute. I'll quickly try from my Windows machine. Okay. I'll try. I think that. No, this would not go through. Come on, F11. Okay. No. I think work station is uh, hang instead. Sorry? Uh, I think your work station, this software is hanging instead. Can you check your uh, uh, performance part, Windows? Is there any utilization I have, uh, right now? Okay. Give me a minute. I have my Windows machine is almost booted up. I'll quickly hit F11 from there. I mean, I'm sorry for this, but yeah, I mean, I don't know why this is not going through. Last time it did go through, but the same key combination is not working right now. I am sorry for this. Shift Control F11. Okay. Shift Control F11. Now let me try this over here. I'm trying Shift Control F11. No, nothing is working. Now I've tried all the combinations. Nothing seems to work. I think try to click that workstation. I think it's actually not click. Just click the workstation on the top. Oh, there's one problem. Yeah, I don't know what key combination I hit right now. No, no, actually, it crash does, actually that CPU. Does your uh, the PC or operating uh, system support the this ESX eight version? No, no, no. On VMware Workstation, I am trying to hit the key combination for uh, with the Mac. So I don't know why that is not taking through. If you had Fusion, it might have worked, but this is VMware Workstation. So.
that could be a concern over here okay let me okay let me do a reset i don't know what has happened over here i also face this problem but how i fix it i for it okay so this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit the uh, F11 with a Windows machine. So I'll basically I'm switching my laptop now. I have another machine, so I'll quickly shift to that one, and then I will show it to you from there. Okay. Let me join the Zoom from there. Just give me a minute, please. Okay, so I'm changing my screen now. So I'm just going to stop the share. And I'm going to start my share from the other screen, which is basically my Windows machine so that I don't run into this problem now. Okay, so give me a minute, please. I'll quickly log on to that machine. Uh, this um this this VMware Workstation is uh, are you installing on uh Workstation uh, PC Workstation or laptop? So VMware Workstation can be installed on uh, any operating system. Okay. Windows ten, Windows okay. eleven, Windows twenty nineteen, anything. Okay, uh, but uh, you just need the hardware right now. You are say, sharing the screen. This P, uh, this is a PC OP station or laptop, simple laptop. 
no this is i have a i have a made computer okay and from that one i am doing this so okay uh riaz allow me to share buddy i am not getting the option to share make me the host on the new one uh yes i am you would see another id of me as a trainer over there make me yeah, the host yeah get uh-huh. something Oh, I see your Hello. one ID. Yeah. yeah, what is the other name? Trainer. Trainer, only? trainer. Yeah, the trainer. Okay, yeah, I can see the trainer. Hello, sir. Yeah, just give me a minute, buddy. Give me a minute. Uh, I did it. Okay, great. Thank you. Sir, okay. ESX is uh, still free, right? Yeah, yeah. ESX is still free. Okay, so I come to the installation over here. I'll hit the enter key. You see license agreement. I hit. I'll hit the F eleven key, and basically I proceed now with the license agreement. Okay. Now it is basically so scanning for the. I have a question here. Ah, go for it. Actually, you have told sir whenever I am to buy exercise, then go for a vendor. But if uh, that no, no, I am talking H- about the ISO. The ISO, ISO you have huh? to get from the from the vendor. Uh, but uh, in hp or in dell there are uh, dell customized iso exsi or hp customized yes. iso so that, that is, is very well work to use. that will okay, work that, means that is open source available then no need to go to vendor isn't it no 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 so when you get the iso from dell they will have their firmware and drivers included in that right the intention is not to install only the esxi the intention is that you should be able to install the drivers and the firmwares as well because if you do not install the drivers and the firmwares and you only install the esxi tomorrow you will run into challenges that's the reason you go for a customized iso you get the point buddy right sir actually just uh, that's why i'm asking that if some uh, dell customized or hp customers iso from somewhere i have getting then no need to go to vendor that's no 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 always reach out to the vendor when you have a dell hardware why are you not contacting dell you are paying okay. money for them you are paying money to them no for your contract okay but so when you have a like, valid contract go to reach out to them uh, but actually i have a doubt that uh, because suppose windows suppose i am going to vendor for my licensed windows then he will charge so will that uh, vendor will charge additionally for exsi no. as that exsi is no, open no, source no. No, but no, no. will vendor is, is charge something no no they will not charge it is all included okay. for free okay okay thank you sir thank you sir now this is the 10 gb hard drive on which i am going to install my esxi so this is already selected in yellow i'll hit the enter key and i'll proceed now it is talking about what is the keyboard layout that you will have okay depending on the region wherever you are which keyboard you are comfortable with choose that keyboard i am comfortable with us default so i'll choose this option and i'll continue now here it says choose the root password why a root password because esxi is backed by linux kernel and in linux everything you have root so you need to enter a password over here okay so i'll enter the password as you know welcome at the rate 123 w is in caps this is my default password for the lab i'll hit the enter key and i'll proceed and now it says that you are about to install esxi on your local hard drive all the data will be gone the disk will be repartitioned are you sure you want to do this and you hit f11 and you say yes this is how you install esxi simple and straight okay there is nothing fancy there is nothing you know uh, much you have to do over here simply hit f11 couple of times simply hit uh, you know enter couple of times and that's about it once the esxi installation is done okay then you access your esxi and you start managing it how do i access the esxi let me answer that question now so let this installation go through i am pausing my screen share i am going back to my original machine now and let me show that to you okay so just give me a minute sorry for this dancing around from one machine to another machine i had no intention of doing it but uh, yeah some problem has made me do this 
Okay, I'm sharing my screen again. Okay. So you see the installation is kind of going on right now. So this is how you install the ESXi. When the ESXi installation is done, okay, then you will have an IP address. You simply need to hit the IP address. Now, this is the machine that I have on which ESXi is already running. Okay. So once the installation that you see over here, whenever this is done, you will get an IP address. Put in that IP address over there. Okay. And hit the enter key on the browser. Now you could be on any machine, Mac, uh, Linux, Windows, any other operating system does not matter, right? Because all that you need is a browser. Okay. Just go to your browser, enter the IP, and you know you will be on the ESXi host client. Enter the credentials. It will be the root because it is backed by ESXi, and then the password, which is basically the one that you gave during the installation for me, which is welcome at the rate 123. And then you hit the button login. And now you have logged into the ESXi. Okay. So now when you log into the ESXi, here you would see that, you know, which version of ESXi are you running from? What is the uptime? How much CPU? How much memory you have? What is the storage that you have? Okay. And then here it will talk about which virtual machines are you running? How many storages you have? What is the networking that you have done? All the basic details that you will basically find over here. And this is how you install ESXi. And then, you know, you access to it. And this is like a one machine. Okay. Now, this is not a branded machine. That is why you see the manufacturer, you know, and the model to be filled out by OEM, because this is not a, you know, true hardware, you know, uh, branded machine that I have. That's the reason over here, right? If you have a Dell machine, it will basically show you that, you know, this is a Dell, um, you know, Edge, R40, R70, whatever it is, what is the model number, and all the other details you know, would basically see over here. Okay. So that was all that I wanted to basically talk about uh, in today's class. Uh, uh, Riaz, over to you. Hello. Hey, Riaz, go for it. I can hear you. Hey, 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 hi. My name is Riaz. I'm founder of 3DP Network. And today we are announcing an offer to you. And our sales and marketing head is Mr. Ayan Sheikh. We will give some offer for today's class. Who is sitting in the today's class will give some offer. Yeah, hey, Ayan, please continue. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Ayan Sheikh, uh, handling the sales and marketing department for CDV Networks. So, like, if you purchase VMware, uh, you will get it uh, for 12,000 rupees or $160. And in bonus, you will get two recorded video free of your choice, like uh, AWS Solution Architect, Palo Alto, VMware NSXT, and VMware uh, Hindi and English both are uh, available with us. And like, if you're interested in both, we have uh, this Linux also, and we you can go for the combo offer, which will be costing you twenty five thousand rupees or three fifty dollars. So I request everyone to please the please fill the pre booking form like given in the chat box. Thank you. If you have any question, you can ask. So we will be starting the batch very soon. I think it'll be by next week. We'll be uh, starting a new fresh batch. It'll be on weekends, and you know we can basically, you know, uh, we'll be going about each and every topic, like I mentioned earlier, and we would be covering all the points over there. So, like we have spoken about, you know, about all the nitty gritty details. We'll be talking about what a cluster is, how do you configure networking, storage, virtual machine, what the options are, and you know how to go about it. Any questions anyone has, feel free to go for it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shahid, your voice is not clear. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, uh, before, uh, before day after I attend the new tennis class also. Uh, now I'm confused. Uh, which is the best, uh, the best platform in the virtualization in the VMware and our new tennis? See, there is nothing called as a best or a bad one. If you talk about cloud in today's world, you need to learn everything. The more you know, the better for you. If you 
start a comparison that I should only learn the best and not learn the about the other one, I think that would not be the right approach. Um, to talk about the best and the bad, think about it. VMware has been there in the market for last 22 years. Nutanix has been there for last 10 years. VMware is a dominant player you know, when it comes to virtualization. Think about VMware like an Apple. Okay, You have an Apple phone with the latest and greatest functionalities, and then you know you wait for three or four years. Every other vendor will give you that functionality. Same is the case with VMware. VMware is an undisputed heavyweight champion, you can say, you know, in virtualization. And then, of course, all the features they will roll out, everyone else will be more than happy to copy it over. So that is what I would say. So there's nothing called as a good and a, and a bad one. I would say that, you know, you should basically learn. The more you learn in today's environment, the better for you. Okay, thank you. No problem. Anyone else, if you have any questions, go for it. Uh, sir, good evening. Hey, evening. Yeah, actually, I like your uh, teaching uh, skill. Uh, Thank sir. you. It's very simple and smartly uh, that uh, whole topics. Sir, actually, uh, VMware product now, Broadcom will be their own, right? Yeah, yeah. VM Broadcom now owns all the VMware softwares. You are right. Yeah. And uh, I see the tweet. Uh, I see the tweet in uh, VMware site that uh, uh, February months only ESX had no more free. Um, I see that they tweet. Don't have like, to. Yeah, they don't have to give the free ESXi because they're already giving you their enterprise edition, you know, for a trial of 60 days. So 60 days are more than enough, you know, for you to try out the application. And if you're not happy mm -hmm. with it, or if you want to do some more testing, again, you can do, you can go for a reinstallation and you will get 60 days again. So free hypervisor was for very small customers. And for them, you know, they've basically rolled out another features, you know, another packs, and you have got these trial versions. So every company has a strategy. I mean, your client would not be running the free version. Of course, they would have the enterprise edition, no, that they will be running on. Yeah, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, guys, request you to, to please, please free to fill free booking form. So our sales team will get back to you and give some offer. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, I have a question about uh, the access forces. Uh, uh, in our environment, we have two access forces. When I try to apply a patch update on one of them, the VMs automatically power on. How can I prevent this from happening? Power on or power off? Power on. When I try to apply the patch update on one of them mm -hmm. automatically the vms go power on i don't know how to pre prevent this to have from happening so the best way to patch an esxi is always put it in the maintenance mode and then do the activity yes so when, when i try the... even i put one horse in maintenance mode before before mm -hmm. i'm using to do it but mm -hmm. now i don't know what's happening on the lcc horse when i try to patch one of them Automatically, mm -hmm. all the VM, they will mm. power on automatically. I don't you might know need how to, to find that one. You might the need HA, to check. Yeah. Mm. The HA, okay. the HA is activated also. Okay, okay. So if the I VMs think... are getting powered on, you know, you you might have the option of auto power uh, on. On every ESXi, you have a functionality wherein as soon as the ESXi powers on, the virtual mm -hmm. machines automatically, they get powered yes. on. So yes. you might want to check if that functionality is enabled on the ESXi or not. And if the VMs are getting powered on automatically during the patch, I would recommend you log a case with VMware and let them investigate and let you know that why this is happening. Yeah, okay. I think uh, the uh, the HA uh, agent is uh, powered on. Uh, in that case, uh, you need to forcely shut down that HA agent. And delete that uh, machine. No. Then after no. you put no, this is this uh, is in production. We cannot delay them. No, 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 you don't have to. No, you don't have to do all that thing. I mean, yeah. HA is a different functionality altogether, which will yes. basically help you when the ESXi fails. So these are two yeah. different things altogether. If the VMs are booting up, then I would log. I would suggest you to verify that functionality. If the 
auto power on functionality is enabled on the ESXi. Yes, is it if enabled? not, is it enabled? yes, I checked. It is it enabled. Is enabled. Yes, uh, that's the enabled. reason VMs are getting powered on. No, as soon as the ESXi boots up, the VMs mm-hmm. will get powered on. Disable that functionality, then you okay, would see that the VMs will not get powered on. Okay, okay, that's that's good. Thank you very much for that. No problem. Anyone else has any question? Go for it. Shahid, do you have any question, Shahid? I have another question on uh, suppose of, uh, in the event of the exam fail. So what kind of log we should trace and if it is facing, then how to copy on uh, the machine from the PS? What is the location of the log file? See, VMware in ESXi logs are not redundant. You will reboot the ESXi and the logs will go away because that's the architecture. You need to redirect the logs. You need to put the logs on a data store. So in the training, I'll show you on how to redirect the logs and put them on the data store so that when you reboot the ESXi, you will have the logs to refer to. This is the default behavior of the ESXi. Okay. So if you would like to understand that why the ESXi failed... The location is var log VMware. That is where you will find all the logs, var log. And in the VMware directory, you will have all the logs. Close to about 20, 25 log files you will see over there. Every log file has a different functionality, what it is doing, and what information it will provide you. Okay? Thanks. No problem. All right, everyone. Thank you for your time on the call. I'll hope to see you on next weekend uh, where we'll continue. If you have any questions during this week, you can always reach out to Riaz and, you know, Riaz can patch me in and we'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you, everyone. Have a great yeah, week thanks. ahead. Thanks. Bye. We'll upload a video on YouTube. Demo Thank video. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.